Friends, I'm Pastor Milton R. Hawkins, pastor of Temple of Deliverance, Church of God in Christ, the church where Jesus Christ is always magnified and never, ever is he compromised. Welcome to another TOD experience. We're located at 369 G.E. Patterson Avenue in the city of Memphis. We worship the Lord each Sunday morning at 7.45 a.m. and 11 o'clock a.m. We meet again Sunday nights, 7 o'clock p.m. And then Tuesday night is a very special and a very powerful night at Temple of Deliverance pastoral teaching, miracle anointing service, night of deliverance. That service is at 7 o'clock p.m. You owe it to yourself to come out and study the Word of God with us. It will do you good. Well, we are growing by leaps and bounds. I mean, this church, I'm just in awe of what God is doing here in this ministry. So many people are coming to the Lord. So many people are getting saved. So many families are joining. So many young people, teenagers and young adults are becoming a part of this ministry. God is bringing them out of the streets, out of their situations, and he's showing them a better way. And you need to come and be a part of this ministry. It's worth the drive. It's worth you coming. You will be blessed when you come and set your feet on the grounds of this ministry. I guarantee it because God will back it up with strength, power, and deliverance. Come out, I wanna see you real soon. In the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 20, there's a very familiar story of Jehoshaphat being, look like uh, scared to death because three nations came up against him. The inhabitants of Mount Seir, the children of Ammon, the children of Moab, they came against him to do battle. He got nervous, he got fearful, but he did do the right thing. He prayed, he put his uh, people on a fast, on a consecration. And while they were praying, a man by the name of Jehaziel came up and said, Jehoshaphat, I got a word for you from the Lord. You don't need to fight in this battle. Here is the strategy. Put the choir, the praise team, the music department in front of the army and let them just go crazy praising God and giving God the glory in music. And when you get finished praising God in song, God's gonna give you the victory. Isn't it something how we've got to have a strategy in order to obtain victory? Sometimes if you just sing a song, that song will lift your spirit. I want to talk to you today about strategies for victory. Your victory is more complete when you have a strategy in order to get there. Let's go into today's telecast. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. And then there came some that told Jehoshaphat saying, there cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side, Syria. And behold, they be in Hazazam Tamar, which is Engadai. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven and rulest not thou over all of the kingdoms of the heathen? 
and in thine hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? Jump down to verse 12. O our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. And neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. And then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Madaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you. Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerel. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle, Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And verse 17, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves. Stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. For a few moments, I want to talk to you from the subject, Strategies for Victory. Strategies for Victory. Most of us would enjoy continual and uninterrupted victories in our lives. But sometimes we fail to realize that victory comes at a premium cost. Although victory is certainly more exhilarating than defeat, it comes with a hefty cost that many are not willing to pay. To obtain victory, one must have a plan that works. You not only need a plan, but you need a plan that works. What was stated many years ago is as true today as it was when it was first spoken. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And even in this economic downturn, you must have a strategy for your life that will bring you success. Well thought out strategies are beneficial regardless to your profession or calling in life. A war is only won when the proper strategy has been scrutinized and then implemented and allowed to succeed. Even though a country or a nation or an army wins a war, it comes with many unexpected casualties. The major corporations of our society today are downsizing, offering buyouts to employees. And many times they do it to stay competitive and to stay afloat in an uncertain world. But families suffer as a result of the numerous cutbacks. If we would only focus on the negative and the disappointing news that we hear every day, we would be, as the Apostle Paul said, men most miserable. But since God loves us, and since God has given us a plan for our lives, uh, since God has given us a sure strategy, we simply need to put it in motion and occupy till Jesus comes. Chronicles deals with both Judah and Jerusalem. 
Uh, many times in the scripture, Judah is, Jerusalem is sometimes referred to as Zion. It's because this is the place, this is the kingdom, the city where the temple was built. There were three reasons uh, that were very important to the temple. Number one, the temple was a symbol of the unity of the nation. Number two, it was a reminder of the nation's high calling. And thirdly, it was a sign that Jehovah was still with his covenant people. Now you can say what you want to. A lot of folks nowadays have problems with the church. But the church is still the mechanism, the institution that God has ordained for your benefit. You can say what you want to about church folks, uh, about whoever, the pastor, the, the preachers, the, the mothers, the deacons, the missionary. You can talk about one another. But God has ordained the church to be for the good of society. And when folks cut up, it's not the church that's cutting up anyway. Because the church doesn't teach folks to cuss folks out. Church don't teach folks to tell folks off. The church teaches love and unity and peace and resolution. We don't teach kill your brother. We preach love your brother. No matter how your brother or sister treats you, love them anyway. That's what the church preaches. And so the church is still God's mechanism for your deliverance. Matter of fact, I found out that if it was not for the church, I don't know how I could learn God like I do. A whole lot of the Bible colleges and a whole lot of the seminary schools, they, the, the teachers that teach in the school, they don't even have the Holy Ghost. They don't even believe in the Spirit. But when I come to God's house, and especially a Pentecostal house, it lets me know that the Holy Ghost is real. Because the Holy Ghost can show up in any part of our services. He'll show up during offering time. He'll show up in the announcements. He'll show up anytime the condition is ready. That's why creating an atmosphere is so vital and so important. When you come to church, you ought to come with an agreement in your heart. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. He doesn't come in confusion and fussing and arguing, but he does come in praise. He does come when God is being glorified and being lifted up. He does come when we set the atmosphere and say, Lord, you are welcome in this place. And not only are you welcome in this place, but you're welcome in this place. So the temple is a symbol of unity for the nation. The 20th chapter in 2 Chronicles is one of the most beloved Old Testament stories. How God can give victory in the midst of overwhelming circumstances. If we could only look at life from God's perspective, if we could only see it from God's viewpoint, we would know it doesn't matter how many folks come against us. It doesn't matter how many folks slander you and lie against you. It doesn't matter how you look outnumbered. No weapon formed against you will prosper. And somebody needs to know that today. Somebody got some situations they're dealing with in their personal life. And you need to know that God has already given you a strategy for victory. You need to know that God already sees you on the other side. You are here wallowing in the mud and here, my God, being disappointed and feeling sorry for yourself. But the angels are over clapping and flapping their wings because they see you getting ready to come out like pure gold. You got to know that God has already given you strategy and he's already given you victory. You see, you don't have to obtain victory by unconventional means. You don't have to obtain victory by illegal means. You don't have to obtain victory by ungodly means. You don't have to obtain victory by impractical methods. When God is with you, the Bible says, my God, that he's, when he's for you, he's more than the world against you. 
when God is on your side greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world victory is certain when you trust in him and one of the greatest statements that anyone can make about another is made about King Jehoshaphat in 2nd Chronicles chapter 17 verses 3 through 6 it says that the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the first ways of his father David tell your neighbor you got to be careful how you walk God noticed his steps God noticed his behavior God noticed his conduct God noticed his communication and he walked according to how he watched how he heard about his father David walking I, I don't want anybody to lead me that's not walking in the right direction I don't want anybody to whisper into my spirit and feed my spirit when their spirit is full of deadly poison. I don't want anybody prophesying to me and you can't even get yourself straight. I want somebody to tell me the truth and nothing but the truth so help me God. And I want somebody that who knows how to have a relationship with God because if you can't relate to God how can you get me to relate to God? You got to first relate to God before you help somebody else he walked in the first ways of David his father and sought not unto Balaam but he sought the Lord God of his father and walked in his commandments and not after the doings of Israel you see your victory is not determined by what others do your victory is determined about what you do when you do what's right when you speak at folks when folks won't speak to you when you love folks that hate on you when you do good to them that persecute you it doesn't matter what they do to you but just make sure you put out love in return you see real victory comes because you have relationship you've got to be in love with God a whole lot of folks love everything but God but you gotta learn how to love God you gotta love God when you don't hear him talking to you you gotta love God if he don't give you what you want immediately you gotta love God just because he is God you better love him when you go to bed and love him when you wake up and love him all of your life it's about relationship you don't know how it feels to have victory until you've been knocked down a few times you don't know what victory feels like until somebody tells you you're not going to amount to much. You don't know what real victory is until you've tasted some defeat. And the, the greater the defeat, the sweeter the victory. When God raises you up against all odds, oh my God, and that's what I like about God. He raises you up against all odds. Oh, many people, your family counted you out. Your friends counted you out. The devil tried to knock you out. But God said, live and give my name glory. Live and give my name praise. Jehoshaphat faced the greatest challenge of his life. He had three nations come against him. The children of Moab, the children of Ammon, and the inhabitants of Mount Seir. In other words, Syria. He came up against them. They came against him to do battle. Some of you have been there. You've had trial after trial, and test after test, and problem after problem. And Jehoshaphat starts shaking like a leaf. The Bible said he feared, but fear is all right when it'll force you to your knees sometimes we don't pray until things get tight in our life sometimes we don't pray until we've got a storm in our life but you better learn how to pray I found the answer I learned to pray with faith to guide me I found the way the sun is shining for me each day I found the answer I learned how to pray so God gives him a strategy and it tells him to seek the Lord so he starts to pray and then he fasts and turns his plate down but you've got to remember 
that King Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah and you know that Judah means praise and sometimes the devil likes to back you up against the wall sometimes the devil likes to cloud your life with bad news he's trying to destroy your praise but you got to let the devil know that praise is what I do every time I look around I feel like praising God after all that I've been through I still have my joy when your back is up against the wall let the devil know that I'm not going to lose my praise you got to get back to praise he tried to cut off Judah they tried to cut off praise because the devil is smart enough to know if I can stop the saints from praising God I can stop them from victory and since you know the devil wants to cut down your praise it's time for you now to make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands serve the Lord with gladness come before his presence with singing know ye that the Lord he is God it is he that have made us and not we ourselves we are his people and the sheep of his pasture enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good every time I come in here I enter his gates with thanksgiving I thank him in advance I thank him for what I already prayed for I thank him for what I don't see because I know it's on the way when I look over my life I could have been dead I had asthma for over 40 years I don't know how many times I ended up in the hospital I don't know how many times I couldn't go to school I don't know how many times when I was preaching I just had to stop because I was short of breath I had asthma for 40 years but when God delivered me I really gotta praise now I'm gonna praise him I'm gonna praise him and if I praise my way through I'll praise my way out if I praise him while I'm going through the storm he's gonna bring me out if I praise him on my sick bed he's gonna bring me out I may not can praise him like you do but if I can just wave my hand it lets God know that I'm thankful to be in the number one more time I don't know about you hallelujah but they can talk about closing up churches they can talk about trying to ban folks from talking about Jesus they can get every Bible in the city of Memphis and get every Bible in the United States of America I don't know all the scriptures because there's too many to know it's 66 books 39 in the old 27 in the new I don't know all the Greek and Hebrew and I don't use all the lexicons but one thing I know I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor is seen begging for bread one thing I know God is a good God angels bow before him heaven and earth adore him what a mighty God we serve one thing I know let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy hallelujah I just heard something how many y'all ready to come out get your neighbor by the hand and pull on them and say you coming out of here you're coming out you're coming out of here God has given you victory come on out come on out yeah, come on out he's given you the victory he's given you the breakthrough he's given you the miracle Ow! come on out Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. As I close, Jehaliel told him it's not your battle. The battle 
belongs to God. When the choir got finished singing and the Lord heard their cry, he said, ambushments all the way from heaven and the enemy started killing one another. And three days later, three days later, walking over dead bodies, picking up the booty, picking up the good stuff, picking it up. When God gets finished with your enemies, all you got to do is walk over your enemy because he given you the victory. He given you the victory. I dare you not to walk over your walk. Your enemy is high bills. Your enemy is cancer. Your enemy is high blood pressure. Walk over it. Walk over it. Your enemy is sickness. Walk over it. Yeah, yeah. Come on and praise him. Praise him. I'm going to stop. My time is out. Hallelujah. But I have the victory. I know I got it. I can feel it in my hand. I can feel it in my feet. I got the victory. When I walk in, I already know the outcome. I've already looked in the back of the book. I've already got the answer. And the answer is you win. Hallelujah. When the storms of life are on your side, let the Lord know, here I am, standing in the need of prayer. It's not my brother. It's not my sister. It's not my mama. It's not my daddy. It's me, oh Lord. I need a miracle. I need a breakthrough. I need a hand up. I need you to touch me. I need you to revive me. I need you to shake me. I need you to quicken me. I need you to help me. Yeah. Well, from time to time, I have to repeat the words of my uncle, the late Bishop G.E. Patterson, that's Gilbert Earl Patterson. Here is another message that you need in your tape library. You can have this in its entirety by writing me, Pastor Milton R. Hawkins, Temple of Deliverance, 369 G.E. Patterson Avenue, Memphis, Tennessee, 38126. As for the offer that now appears on your screen, for an audio cassette version, send a gift of at least $5. For CDs, send a gift of at least $12. And for a DVD or VHS, send a gift of at least $15. You also may use your credit card by dialing 1-877-369-6157. The number now is on your screen, 1-877-369-6157. As for the offer number that appears on your screen now, when you dial in, please have your credit card ready. Somebody is standing by now to receive your call. Well, again, we're looking forward to you coming because the Lord is doing great things in this ministry. And I want you to be a part of a fascinating, growing, lively church. We'll do you good. God bless you. Until our next telecast.